So this, we've been going through this transformation series and talking about that and just really believing that the Lord transforms in numerous ways through his word, through worship, through, um, you know, I think hearing God's voice uh, and that was one. And then also last week we talked about uh, transformation through life-changing moments, like, like that we can literally have moments in our life that um, like make all the difference uh, for a transformation. Yeah. Um, but this week we're talking uh, and going to explore about transformation through time. Okay, right. that's, that's kind of what we've titled this one because um, chances are, you know, some of you are here and you're, you're like, you want something different in your life. Like maybe you're watching online, you know, you want something different in your life. And, and that something different doesn't ne- isn't necessarily going to come through any other way except through time. Yeah, some of those moments of transformation happen like that, like an instant, a moment, yeah. twinkling of an eye. Yeah. But this, uh, we're talking about, um, here's the formula, transformation through time. Consistency plus time equals transformation. Dakota, so, would you turn him down? It's, uh, he, it's, he's loud. The slow work of God, <laughs> right? The slow work of God, which we like to go through you know, the fast food line and get God, boom, or healed, Mm -hmm. get that answer to prayer right away, Uh, lose that 30 pounds in our sleep, you know. (laughs) Yeah. But this is different. This is the slow work of God. Like I remember when I started playing guitar, I just wanted to know already how to play the guitar. I didn't want to take the time to practice playing the guitar, right? Mm -hmm. Just those kinds of things. Like we just already want to be where we think we should be or wish we were. Yeah. And And really in the Bible, you don't see the word consistency. The, they use the word steadfast. Yeah. So steadfast is consistency. It's being faithful. It's being firm, immovable. Mm-hmm. Those are the words of steadfast. Mm-hmm. You know, it's easy sometimes for us to get into bad habits. We start something and we keep doing it. And it's like, how did I get here with this mm-hmm. bad habit? Well, mm-hmm. you were consistent at it and through time you developed a habit. But we can do that with good things. So let's just take uh, devotion. You start doing a devotion every morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get in the habit of it. And then what's cool is like when I miss mm-hmm. or I don't do it, I was like, something's missing. I feel like something's missing mm-hmm. in my day. It's like, oh, I didn't do my devotion today. Yeah. So that's what we want to get to is, is the other side. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a great statement. Uh, choosing, uh, being steadfast is choosing what you want over what you want now. Right, choosing, choosing what you want most over what you want now. So yeah. like, you know, if I wanna be a, a, a good vocalist or a good, I don't, you know, just as an example, you know, a good bike rider, like I, I can't, I, I gotta make choices that would help me allow me every day to do that. Right. And so instead of, if I wanna be a good bike rider, instead of, you know, choosing, hey, you're going out to the pool I need to go ride my bike, <laughs> right. right? I mean, there's, there's choices that we make to, to get to those places. Instead and, of sitting down having a donut, right. you so get on your bike. Yeah, <laughs> so instead of being, uh, <laughs> it, uh, it, it's just being steadfast, like to, yeah. to make those choices. And so uh, mm-hmm. there's a couple of scriptures we're gonna talk about just some, some uh, laws that are in, the, in scripture that totally apply to this and will totally uh, help you out um, in this place. Yeah, I, think it, I think it helps me out. It helps yeah. me to talk about this stuff, honestly, yeah. uh, because sometimes I feel like I, I'm getting a little off track in different areas. So yeah, it, it's it, been it, encouraging it, for me. It helps well. me, yeah. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Mm-hmm. And let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Mm, yeah, I liked the NASB version. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be firm and movable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Um, I was just talking yesterday to the pregnancy center. Uh, uh, they invited me in to do a devotion. And, um, we were just visiting about, you know, do you ever feel like what you're doing like is not working? Anybody like you're, you know, you're praying, it's not working, you're working out, you're not seeing results, you're uh, trying harder, you're trying harder, yeah. nothing's working, and it's just like there's this frustration. But it, it says, like, don't give up, 
you know, it's your, your labor is not in vain. Like, do not stop. Do, if God's called you to something, you know, keep going. Um, so that's the encouragement. You will reap, it says, if you do not give up. Yeah. yeah. Be steadfast, abounding in the work of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Here's a quote from uh, this pastor, Craig Rochelle. He's the one who uh, came up with the idea of the Bible app. It's not what we do occasionally that makes a difference, but what we do consistently. I thought that was good. That was good. Like sometimes we look at somebody else and think, oh, they're so good. Like I look at Dakota and he's like such a good electric guitar player. And he's like, oh, I wish I could play guitar like that. Well, you know what? He's put the, he's done that. He's like every day. He's he didn't just learn from occasionally playing. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I just occasionally play. <laughs> 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 so I anyways, uh, um, anyways, we were talking last week. We, we, you were sharing about the prophecy that the Lord spoke to you about remaining steadfast in God's word. Yeah. Right. And, and you had a part to play in that, like that, yeah. that, like every day or, you know, from a consistently through your lifetime of getting yeah. in and staying and remaining steadfast and being consistent in God's word. A lot of times in prophecy, especially you'll see in the Old Testament that there was a condition of it. Like, I'm going to bless you and your crops and all these are going to happen if you continue mm-hmm. to follow me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. With my prophecy had a condition in it. It was to be steadfast and firm and uh, unfortunately my walk with the Lord kind of was like a more like a roller coaster yeah and it wasn't until I really just uh, really when I married you and we started going to church we started you know just consistency happened in my relationship with the Lord then the prophecy became fulfilled yeah hey I just want to point out that you said it was when you married me (laughs) did you guys hear that like, like you he, help get me right? some steadfastness yeah, in my life. Yeah, <laughs> praise the Lord. Uh, okay, so we're going to look at a few scriptures about being steadfast. And yeah, this is a good one. This remember I had that card the other day. I pulled out the scripture I was memorizing. This is Psalms fifty-one ten. Mm. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Uh, I lost the card, but it's okay because I got the verse memorized. Praise God. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's a great scripture. Because uh, we're not always right. good at being steadfast and, re- yeah. and, and keeping that consistency. And so there's, here's a prayer to pray. Here's a scripture mm-hmm. literally to pray like, oh, God, mm-hmm. help me to be you know, more consistent in this area. Help me you know, yeah. continue to uh, uh, work what you've called me to do. Yeah. Right? It's a great scripture to memorize. Very easy you know, crying out to God. This is like a cry, God, you know, give me a pure heart. Renew us, oh God, renew a steadfast spirit into me. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Isaiah 26, three says, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember a talk from Rich Nathans. He's got the largest vineyard in uh, in the United States, in Ohio. And uh, he he says, Uh, you know, remaining steadfast, like to get from point A to point B, you know, people would come to him all the time and like, I want to do this, I want to do that. And, and, and he, he gave this demonstration, like literally, because they'd say, well, how do you do that? And this is, and, and this is what he would do. He would just be like, it's one day at a time. It's one step at a time. Right? Greg calls this the slow work of God because <laughs> right. it, doesn't, it just doesn't always seem like we're making the progress and we're getting to where we want to be. Mm-hmm. And so it's just this consistent, daily um, walk with the Lord. Yeah, it's like setting goals, you know. So I'm going to do this every day, this much, you mm-hmm. know. And you don't want to set a goal beyond what you can do. It's, uh, that's not healthy. Yeah. Because then the fail rate is high if it's too high. Yeah. The bar's too high. Well, we set big goals, but we have to set all the little ones to get there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So here's another scripture. This is uh, 1 Peter 5.30. After you have suffered a little while, the God of grace who called Mm. you to his eternal glory Mm. in Christ will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. And this is Peter talking. This is someone who knows about mm-hmm. suffering. This is someone who wept bitterly after denying Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, and then he turns and the Lord strengthens him. And he becomes the front runner of the church. And uh, 
So he knows all about being restored and being strong and firm and steadfast. And so what an example Peter is for us mm. to be running the race yeah. steadfast. Right. And then we got Psalms 57, 7, my heart, O oh God, is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. I mean, obviously the, psalm, uh, the psalmist here is so excited, you know, uh, just about this consistency in relationship and connecting with the Lord. It's just a consistent journey that he's on of connecting with the Lord every day. Yeah, he um, might have gotten off track like I did. <laughs> yeah. So he's so excited now that he's on track. I'm steadfast. Yeah. I'm steadfast. He's shouting it from the roof. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I can think of That's a lot of it. people actually, in, you know, that we know in our church family that have been just consistent over time um, mm -hmm. in certain things. And you can just tell. Um, you know, uh, uh, consistency in the word uh, over and over again. Like I think of Deb right now as I'm looking at you over there, just years of, you know, uh, precept upon precept, Bible study, just con consistent Bible study, um, uh, you know, which l like I look at her, it's like, oh, well, she has so much knowledge. And it, it's, it just wasn't like she just got it overnight. You right. know, it's been just a walk of that, steadfastness over time. Um, I think of Tim Madigan. We all, you, you guys probably mostly know Tim. And, you know, I, I mean, he rides like 50 miles a day on his bike. Mm -hmm. It's something incredible. And like Greg and I, we're, we talk sometimes like, we should start bike riding. Well, we'll call Tim. No, we won't call Tim. <laughs> There's like no way we can keep up with that guy. You know, but that's not where he started, right? He started doing seven miles a day or 10 or 20, right. you know, like over consistency. And now it's like, if he does a five mile, it's like a, like he did nothing. We might have to do like baby steps, save up some money. We can get a bike like his too. <laughs> 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 He's got like an electric bike. You know, that always helps. Yeah, he just got that though. <laughs> right, like, right. like he's really not had that <laughs> until just now and he's That's 70. That's true. And so, when um, we're 70, we get one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I don't know. But um, our desires <laughs> don't determine who we become. It's really this daily walk of being steadfast over time that determines who we come, who we become, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I seem with like Alicia, you know, she like worked out, you work out like six days a week. She calls her dad every night. These are constant things she yeah. does. Uh, six days a week, she's in, uh, she does a little Bible study and prayer. Mm -hmm. And uh, once a month or once a week, corporate mm -hmm. prayer time. Mm -hmm. And that's really cool. That's yeah, so just consistency. Consistency over time. in those areas, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yes. Um, I think you, every day you're in the Word, every day you're praying, every day you're talking to the Lord. Greg is very faithful. He takes his vitamins every day, twice a day, for as long as I have known him. <laughs> he has, like, taken his vitamins and really been into that. And he's a little lax in the exercise area, only, like, two or three times a week. Yeah, it's, it wavers sometimes. It wavers, but, you know, <laughs> like, like, that's one thing I've been, like, like come on, you can do it. Let's, let's do it. But anyways, mm -hmm. um, and together we're consistent about tithing. That's something we do. We pray and give and help and ask for direction from the Lord. And we believe that's been something that's been yeah. uh, amazing in our lives. That I had like a little revelation in like 2005. I was at this 202 class about, you know, the disciplines of faith. And one of them was tithing. And I was like, well, we give. Yeah. So, but I got the calculator out. I was like, oh, we don't really, we're coming up short yeah. of 10%. So... Uh, we started at that time and been faithful since then, and God's just continued to provide all our needs and blessed mm -hmm. us. And I know you guys could get up here and share those same kind of stories. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So again, okay, so our formula is, okay, say it with me, consistency, consistency plus, plus time, time equals, equals transformation. transformation. So if there's an area that you're wanting transformation in your life, that's the, the, the kind of things you need to start asking is how, you know, what do I do to be consistent you know, over time um, mm -hmm. to get that transformation that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, when, when uh, well, I, I think I'm going to just go to this whole wish thing. Like we often say, I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that. I wish I could go here. I wish I could be, you know, have a different job. I wish I could be in ministry. I wish I could have more friends. I wish I could have better relationships. I wish I could be more influential. Yeah. Uh, I wish I knew the word more. I wish I could lose weight. I wish I could be healthier. I wish I could have a relationship. Did I miss some? 
Can you think of any that I missed? There's, I mean, you're probably filling in a blank. I wish my house looked nicer. Yeah. But consistency I, I <laughs> plus time. Your house looks nice. Your house, it, <laughs> <laughs> it's consistency plus time puts all those wishes into action. Right. Yeah. So we say, what habits can we put that would honor God over mm-hmm. time so that we could actually, you know, become what we feel like he's calling us to become? Um, you, you know, uh, so the, the wish, we want to get past the wish, you know, and, and I know, like for me, like there's so many things I wish often, like I want to do all these things, yeah. but you know, I have to kind of look at, you know, what's realistic so I don't become overwhelmed in those areas. One of our wishes was to travel, to do the Footsteps of Paul tour, and in 2015 we were able to go, but we had to go back a year and a half to start saving up for that trip. Right, we had to change things in our life. We said, yeah. okay, we said, I wish I could do that. Yeah. Uh, so we. St- I really told Greg, I'm going to do that. We need to make it happen, <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> yeah. And he, and he was like, okay. He didn't. <laughs> she was serious. I was like, okay, we got to figure this out. Yeah. So luckily, we just had to come up with money for you plus yeah. extra money, but... Uh, because we got a big enough group to go with this, and I was the leader of the group, the pastor of the group. I got yeah. to go for free. Yeah. So that was awesome. But we yeah. did. We saved up. And it was amazing. We checked every now and then. It's like, oh, we have this much money already. Yeah. You know? I have, uh, we have a couple that comes on Saturday nights always, and they were so cute. They saved up for like a year to be able to go on a cruise. They actually bought the cruise. Um, this was a big deal. They'd never been out of the country, never been out on the cruise, and then COVID hit. Mm. I and, know. And the cruise ship is parked in Port of Arta Bay. Right. <laughs> so they were so. It's just like, oh man, they did they did the right things. That was something that was really on their heart to do, mm-hmm. um, to just kind of disconnect from the the day to day because they'd really they never even traveled, mm. um, and and it was something they wanted to do for their marriage, and it was so sweet. But um, anyways, they will get on that trip one day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so we want to look at. These a law of sowing and reaping. Yeah. And uh, we heard this talk from Craig Ro- Rochelle, who once again was the guy who invented the Bible app and he has mm-hmm. a big church. I think he's out in California, isn't he? I Anyways. don't know where he's at. But he, this is actually what we're going to talk about the sowing and reaping is from a book called The Compound Effect by mm-hmm. Darren Hardy. Uh, so if you're interested, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a, great, uh, a great read. And he says that small, smart choices. Mm-hmm plus consistency, plus time equals radical difference, right? Yeah. So that's, that's his formula. It's a, great, it's a great formula. Small, smart choices, plus consistency, plus time mm-hmm. equals a radical difference. Um, so it, Yeah, it's like that uh, kernel of grain you throw out into the soil and it produces, what, five corn cobs, you know, with mm-hmm. hundreds of seeds mm-hmm. from just one corn. Yeah. And it's, it's as consistent as really the law of gravity, you know, it's just there. It's, you just can't, mm-hmm. you can't change the law of gravity. The law of gravity is the law of gravity. Yeah. So if you jumped off a building, you'd always go down. You'd always fall. Yeah. I mean, just try the ways to get around it. You can put a parachute on, different things. Right. If you didn't have those things. Jetpack. <laughs> Jetpack, airplane. Cool. Right. Um, <laughs> so laws of sowing and reaping. Okay, there's basically three things to the law of sowing and reaping. Number one, uh, uh, you won't get something different than what you sow. Mm. Right. This is just. This is just it. You won't get anything different. If you plant corn, you get. If you plant lettuce, you get. Right. You guys, gardeners in here. Anybody? A few people. Like you. You just don't get. I, I mean, you get what you sow. Yeah. So you, when you're sowing things, like when you're sowing, um, you know, some some discipline in music or in healthy eating or in the scripture, like that's what you're going to get. When you walk into a room and you are smiling and full of joy, usually you get smiles back and you get joy back and you get hugs back. You know, when mm-hmm. you walk in a room and you're a big grump, <laughs> you know, you, you see some of that in return. You reap what you sow. Yeah. yeah. So we get more than what you sow. We just talked about Mark 4, 1, 20 says, Others like seeds sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop, some 30, some 60, some 100 times, that was what was sown. Yeah. So it's a compound effect. It's a multiplication mm-hmm. effect. Like when, when, if you think of sowing, you know, you sow a seed, you get a huge tree out of it. 
right? You get an oak tree or an apple tree and, yeah. and that then produces more fruit. So the ones that take to good soil, obviously there's ones that don't take to good soil, but the mm -hmm. ones that took to good soil, mm -hmm. like they produce a crop that's far exceeds. Um, and I can think of that in numerous ways in our lives, you know, as we've sown, as we've sown into our kids' lives, yeah. you know, like now they're a blessing and they're blessing others. So there's like a multiplication effect to that. Um, can you think of another example? That's I know, uh, I was thinking about real estate, just, you know, your house keeps going up, you take care of it, you put into it, and all of a sudden mm. the property value goes up, and yeah. you sell it and make money, and right. move to the next one. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. And then the last one, the third law, is you have to wait to get what you sow. Like, you always reap after you sow. You never get it before you sow. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that would be nice. But there's a season. You yeah. might plant in the spring and you don't get your harvest or your, your plant until fall. summer or fall. fall. And, and I know, like, I don't know about you, but this is the part I don't like <laughs> because we have to wait. Like, I, that's why I'm not a good gardener. I don't like to wait. I don't like to do the consistent thing and tend the garden. Yeah. It takes discipline. It takes... Mm -hmm. Stepping out there and just saying, this is what I'm going to do. And it takes maybe getting some people around you to hold you accountable or to motivate you or, yeah. you know, to get that change to happen in your life. We got a story of uh, some people. Mm -hmm. We got Sammy the same. What do you think? He does the same thing. And he gets what? No change. <laughs> then uh, what do you got? Stan? We have Stan Steadfast, um, and these are all fictional, of course. We're, made, we're taking this from the book, The Compound Effect. These are all fictional, but we're assuming that these are three guys, middle-aged uh, guys that, you know, have a couple kids. They're married. They, you know, have jobs. Uh, they're middle-aged, so they have kind of the little, the little belly happen, starting to happen. <laughs> okay, so this is the assumption that we're making. So Sammy the same, uh, he obviously, he does nothing, the same thing. Stan Steadfast. He wants to make be healthier, so Stan actually makes a few changes, right? A few small changes. He, he uh, decides to stop eating this one snack that it consisted of Coke and some other... Uh, Twinkies. You know, chips, unhealthy things. Yeah, but only he knocked out one of them. Yeah, That's one, a, it. one a day. One a day. And then he starts walking three times a day. Yeah. And then no, no, three times a week. Three, three times. times a day would be awesome. Oh, yeah, three times a week. <laughs> and then he starts a little devotion. Right. Yeah, 10 minutes a day. 10 minutes a day, yeah. okay. And then we got Tommy tired. Mm. <laughs> he doesn't think things are going to really change anyway, so he actually adds more snacks to his regimen. Yeah, <laughs> more snacks. Really, the, the scientific thing we're doing here is just one yeah, a day. One right? more snack. Yeah. So he gets, um, uh, you know, after a couple months, no big difference. You go, you add time on this. It's not really that big of a deal. Um, but you get to about a year and a half or so, and there's literally a significant difference in, yeah. in these three guys, right? Sammy, uh, really, yeah. there's no difference, right? Same old, same old Sam, mm -hmm. right? But Stan Steadfast, uh, literally, he, he had... 117,000 fewer calories, and he lost 33 pounds, right? Mm -hmm. So over a year and a half, like, he start, like there was a change. And he's starting to feel better. He's not only, you know, obviously now he's read the word all that time and had his devotion all the time. And so, you know, like he actually, you know, he gets a promotion. He, people at his uh, church ask him to be a leader. His uh, wife's happier. His wife's family's happier. happier. Yeah, yeah, like they all see a difference <laughs> in him. Yeah. Whereas Tommy Tired... Um, he actually adds 33 pounds and he adds 117,000 calories over this year and a half time frame. And so there's a 67 pound difference between now Tommy tired and Stan steadfast, right? And, yeah. and Tommy has gone the other direction. He's not been in the word. He's starting to get discouraged. He's starting to feel, you know, more uh, just bummed about where he's at in life. Yeah. You know, he's, he's uh, gone the other direction and really isn't feeling so good. So, um, all this to say, these little examples, you might think these little th the little things that you do every day don't make a difference, but they do make a difference. 
And that's what this example shows. You could use this for anything uh, in, yeah. in your life, but that's really what we were trying to get to is that this example shows the little things you do every day over time make a big difference in who you become and who you are. Yeah, and I think as pastors, our heart cry is, you know, the devotion part, the Word yeah. of God. Yeah. That's more important than anything because that can change your heart and that can change your relationship with the mm -hmm. Lord, which is... You know, the Lord doesn't see you on the day you're judged and say, well, you gained weight. But he, he looks at your heart, right? It's yeah. your heart he looks at. Yeah. So that's going to change more than anything. Mm -hmm. And so that's our heart cry. I know that there's just some of you that just are off track. Maybe you need somebody to hold you accountable. Maybe you need a devotional. But the Bible app has devotionals on it. Mm. You can get on. You can get on it with friends. Yeah. Uh, you can pick up a devotional online for like 10 bucks. Yeah. But just... Just say, this is what I'm going to do. I would say try to find somebody to hold you accountable because that really helps. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to do it every day. Do it five days a week, you know? Yeah. Do it six. I don't make it every day. The day I usually don't make it is today because I get up and I come right to church. But every other day I do. Mm -hmm. And so it does make a change in my life. It does give me uh, just, there's something about it that just adds to my day. Mm -hmm. A spiritual strength. Yeah. So let's look at this scripture, Galatians 6, uh, 7 through 10. Yeah, it says, uh, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we have an opportunity. Let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. Mm. So this is, uh, this is the law that he's talking about. Yeah, and so when will we, when will we reap the harvest? What's the word? What does it say here? When we don't give up. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's just an encouragement that the Lord wanted to speak to some of us today mm -hmm. um, that uh, maybe you have been kind of going along and, and trying something or doing something or trying to make some changes, and it's just been really hard. And, and you've said, like, well, what does it matter anyways? Uh, and, and the Lord really wants to tell you, don't give up. Yeah. Um, that, those, uh, that what you're doing makes a difference uh, to others. Others see what you're doing. God sees what you're doing. And so don't give up. Yeah. Um, and others of you, I think, came in here today and, and maybe, uh, you know, when we went through our wish list, like I wish this, I wish that, uh, like something uh, really uh, highlighted to you today um, that you wish something very specific could be different. And uh, I just want to take a moment and, and kind of uh, 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 take a moment of silence and ask the Lord to maybe show you in that area, that very specific area, you know, I wish I had a better relationship, I wish I uh, was healthier, I wish I was more godly, I wish I w had a different job, you know, that the Lord would show you in that area like some small, s simple things, mm -hmm. you know, that you can be consistent with over time that would bring some sort of transformation in that area. Um, so, so if you would just uh, close your eyes for a moment and let's just ask the Lord mm -hmm. if he would show us that. Yes, um, so Father, uh, we just thank you that you are the God who continually speaks to us. And uh, Lord, as we just think of things that we wish for and hope for um, or areas that we might be stuck in, Lord, we ask that you would come and that you would give us uh, those small, consistent steps that we can take over time that would truly bring transformation in our lives. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Lord, would you help us to remain steadfast? Yes, Lord. And help us to uh, put to work those simple things. Mm -hmm in our lives to bring about those changes. Yes, thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, there, there's one other thing that we wanted to bring up because there is actually one place, you know, the law of sowing and reaping, there is one place that it doesn't work. And so we wanted to make sure that you guys are clear that there is a place that it doesn't work. And that's really with grace. 
Yeah. You know, God's grace. Uh, yeah. Salvation. Uh, like, like we deserved punishment. We got grace. Mm -hmm. Right? We got eternal life. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's grace. Yeah. You we know, I, I heard a story the other day of somebody who's like, who committed these crimes and they were scheduled for like two years in prison and they prayed mm -hmm. and they, they got right with Jesus and all of a sudden all these charges were reduced to probation mm -hmm. and a fine yeah. from two years in prison. Yeah. And that's grace. They deserve two years in prison. Yeah. But God changed it for like them. Oftentimes we deserve one thing and yeah. we, we get another and that's grace. That's grace of God, um, yeah. And, and, you know, sometimes uh, we know that we've sown the wrong things. And we actually are the ones that condemn ourselves for sowing the wrong things. But there's, there's even places in that that like we give ourselves grace and we ask for God's grace um, to help us turn those things around so we don't stay in those stuck places. And I think he does, especially if our heart is true and we do mm -hmm. cry out, Lord, I repent of that. Mm -hmm. Please help me, Lord Jesus. Then the fallout mm -hmm. can stop because yeah. of grace. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. all right. So, um, yeah, if you, if you don't know that, if you're online, if you're in this room and you don't know that grace, um, uh, we pray right now that you would receive the grace that God has won for us on the cross, um, that he wants to pour out his grace. Yes. And we pray uh, in the name of Jesus that you would receive all that he has for you, the direction, uh, the life, and the love that he has for you. And we're just going to go into a time of worship here uh, to close this out today. Yeah. Amen.